Hi. Hello, I'm Eric. And I'm Audrey. And we are the Salts. So to kick us off today, can you tell us the difference between these two phrases? It's a lovely day. It's a lovely day outside. It's a lovely day. <laughs> or, it's a lovely, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day. Mm. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> um, could you tell us the difference? Sound, rhythm, tempo, speed even. Were they even that different at all? Now, you might be asking why we're asking you those questions, and they might seem really, really obvious to you. But what we're trying to show in that exercise is that both music and language are connected. They come together in this beautiful symbiotic dance that gives meaning to the words that we use. And that's how we've come together as assaults. We found that both language and music were this beautiful vehicle that we could use to communicate something far deeper within us. And that's the story that we want to share with you today. The story of how music has transformed our lives and potentially how it can transform your life as well. But first, what do we mean by the transformative power of music? Well, number one, it means that music has the power to change us. Secondly, it means that music can help us to communicate much more effectively. And last but not least, that the transformative power of music requires our continued and active engagement with it. So a few years ago, my family went on a cycling trip along the California West Coast. And what began as a fun little bonding activity turned out to be a pretty strenuous workout. And I vividly remember this one moment when we were trying to get past this one hill along the steep coast. And uh, I couldn't even feel our legs, we were so sore. And my mom was in the back and she just shouted, sing me a song, I can't get past this hill, sing me a song. Uh, so my brother and I went back and sang, you're an overcomer, stay in the fight till the final round, you're not going under, and overcome we did, thank you Mandisa, that's a real song, um, it's just the power of that song gave us a last lease of energy to get through the rest of the trip. Sometimes the power of music, the power of a song can be through a collection of songs, think about a playlist that you got through, you know, when you were studying for exams. For me, it was this really intense Russian composer uh, by the name of Dmitry Shostakovich. And um, this is where my classical nerd comes in. He wrote these incredible string quartets and piano quintets that had such malevolent melodies and militant rhythms. And it just really matched my stress level. I'll give you a little taste. Um... <laughs> So the power of that music um, really helped me focus and, and made me feel one with what I was doing. And for me, I remember my first couple of years at university and really finding myself in what seemed like this deep pit of depression. Life was hard and everything just looked dark. I remember in the background I had on constant replay this album by Rivers and Robots called Eternal Sun. Beautiful songs on there. But that album and listening to those songs just helped me to do the simplest of things, the things that I needed to do. And so what you can see here is that not only does music do something for us, it can actually do something to us as well. In terms of science, music has been widely acknowledged to be a catalyst for neurological growth and development. There was a study published by the National Academy of Sciences a few years ago by Lorger, and it showed that music enabled weight gain, improved feeding, and stabilized the heart for premature babies. Similar studies as well by the Frontiers of Neurology found that within Parkinson's sufferers, music was actually able to assist um, people's gait and uh, stabilise their movement. Mm. Another study uh, found that in young children with autism, music was able to ease their social interactions by translational psychiatry. Mm. And so what we can see there is that all the way from pre-breath to end of life, music has the power to change how we can empirically show up in the world. And it's really powerful when we can see it in that way as well, right? Mm, yeah. So we see that music can change us physically, emotionally, but maybe even spiritually as well. Uh, we're going to take some time to reflect on that. Um, before we do, we just invite you in this next song to consider where does this song take you? What does it make you think of? you 
Okay, that was our first song, First and Last. Now, I actually remember when we wrote this song and we were in what seemed like a really dark and dingy room at the bottom of the Royal Academy of Music. Well, it wasn't that bad. Uh, okay, not that bad, but um, it was actually where Eric was studying at the time. He was on the keys and I was just belting out some tunes and there it came. My lover, my dearest friend, and away we went. As we refined and as we perfected that song, uh, we found that the shape of it completely changed, whether that was the style, the rhythm, the, the texture of it. It all changed as we engaged far deeper with it. In the lyrics, we found a way to communicate with each other, and we also found a way to convey something far deeper, more grounding to us as individuals and as a band, and that was our faith. In that moment, we were unified, singing from the same chord sheet. And that's actually how I knew that we were both speaking the same language. Mm. Now, we tell all these stories of songwriting because it's just about some of many examples that we can give of how music has transformed our lives. But also to our second point, that music can be used to communicate so much more effectively. Um, for me, I realized when I first started songwriting that it required a, a deep and mature level of communication that I just wasn't aware of. Um, when I began songwriting, I was very disconnected from my, my heart, my mind, my feelings, my thoughts. I had all of these melodies and rhythms and things going on and they poured out of me, but I didn't know how to translate them to Audrey, how to communicate them to her. So in our sessions, I had to slow down, I had to listen to her and, and understand her way of music making. Each month when we met, I disconnected from the busyness and stress of conservatory life, all the rehearsals and the lessons and the concerts. Uh, and I reconnected with something deeper, something much more innate and longer lasting. And it was through that type of communication that we were able to become much more connected as a band. And after we formed the band, we found that really connecting to what grounded us as individuals and as a band was really important. And for that, that was God. And now we say this as Christians, but for you, it might look completely different. For you, it might be meditation and breathing exercises. It might be your daily walk with your dog in the mornings. It might even be that cup of tea that you have after every single meal, uh, like my grandma used to do. Mm. Ultimately, what we're trying to say here is that when you can find what it is that grounds you as an individual, you can then use that to communicate much more effectively. Mm. So we've seen that music has the power to change us. It, has, it can be used to communicate much more effectively. But lastly, music requires some active engagement, active listening for it to be catalyzed. So what do I mean by that? Well, in the early 1900s, there was this really cool German philosopher named Theodore Adorno. And he wrote some fascinating essays and theories about the decline of music listening. He came up with this five-step process of how people engage with music and how this was declining. Um, and it's pretty frightening to consider that over a century ago, um, this, the, he was predicting this. So we have to fight hard against that. You know, all of our devices and social media are just fighting for our attention and distraction. If any of you have seen The Social Dilemma on Netflix, then you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but don't get me wrong, I mean, there's, there's definitely times for passive listening. Think about like a good 80s playlist when you're cleaning the house, you know, vac doing the Hoover and, or uh, like a nice smooth jazz as you're eating spaghetti with your loved one. Um, and yeah, that's great. Streaming platforms like Spotify and YouTube are all great for that. But can you remember the last time you actively just listened to a song or a piece of music by itself? So what do we mean by active engagement, active listening? Yeah, so active listening means three things. Firstly, it's keeping our minds and our brains engaged. So what is it that we're listening to? What is it that we're hearing? Do we like it? Do we not like it? Second of all, it's really contemplating what we're listening to. So what does it make you think? What does it make you feel? And last but not least, it's enjoying the music. Music is there to be enjoyed and to be savoured. Mm -hmm. However, to really unlock the, the, the tools and the power that we're, we're talking about today, it is an exercise, it's a habit that we have to continually practice. And just like any good habit, the more we do it and we do it well, the better we can receive the, the rewards of it. Mm -hmm. So in our final song, we just invite you to actively engage.
I'm feeling awfully low. I don't know where to go, so I hold on, hold on. And I don't know what it means to make sense of things, but I hold on, hold on. Da -di -da 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 When I'm feeling awfully low, I don't know where to go, so I hold on, hold on. And I don't know what it means to make sense of things, so I hold on, hold on. And the thistles and the weeds, you are bending down for me. And I'm lifting up my hands, would you help, help me if you can? Steward of the land, you tame the wild in me. And the thistles and the weeds, you are bending down for me. And the thistles and the weeds, you are bending down for me. It's cold and it's dry, and it's damp and it is windy. And I'm missing out my hands, and I'm trying to see if you can. It's dark and through the gloom, oh, thistles and the weeds, and I am caught and I am bleeding on my knees. Would you help me? Take my hand. This was in the way you are bending down. Take my hand. And I know that I want you. And I know that I need you. And I know that I want it. So pride, would you let me go? And I know that I want it. This is in the way. Would you let me go free? And I'm taking hold times that are us to hold. Oh, though my heart's not saying so free. And I'm taking hold pride. Let me go. Oh, oh. pride. Would you let me go free? And I'm taking hold times that are us to hold. Oh, though my heart's not saying so free. And I'm taking hold pride. Let me go. Oh. oh. Pride, would you let me go free? And I'm taking hold times, not us to hold. Oh, though my heart's not saying it's so free. And I'm taking hold pride, would you let me go? Oh, pride, would you let me go free? And I'm taking hold times, not us to hold. Oh, though my heart's not saying it's so free. And I'm taking hold pride, would you let me go? Oh. <laughs> that was thistles and the weeds. Yeah, how was that? How was it to engage with the music? How's your heart? What's going on in your mind? Um, we hope you enjoyed that. Whether or not you did, you can be the judge of that. But um, yeah, what I love about our music is that we can sing of something 
love, for instance, in so many different ways. And you can communicate so much deeper with that. You feel it and perceive it in different ways. Um, yeah, take love, right? I mean, we, we sing of a love that stoops down to the mud and the mire and to the thistles and the weeds. Uh, a love that chases after us, that protects us, that begins and ends with us. Maybe you identify with this kind of love or maybe you yearn for it. We sing of a love that we have found, but also a love that we have just yet to give. In all of this, we aim to communicate authentically, knowing that to do so will take us on a journey of transformation where we ourselves are changed. So to conclude our talk today, the journey of songwriting that we've shared with you is one which starts with our most vulnerable selves. Uh, we allow ourselves to go on this journey of self-discovery whereby we are changed. We actually believe that um, what's really important and a prerequisite for, for, for any sphere of life, whether that's music, songwriting, economics, business, whatever sphere, uh, is actually finding what it is that grounds us. Because when we find what grounds us, we can then use that to propel onwards. And so what we covered today, that the transformative power of music actually means that, number one, uh, we realize that music has the power to change us. Mm. Secondly, it means that music can help us to communicate much more effectively. And last but not least, that the transformative power of music requires our continued and active engagement with it in order to be realized. So next time that you, you put on a, a playlist on Spotify or you hear a song uh, in the airwaves, remember that not only does music do something for us, it actually does something to us as well. And actually, that is the start of us changing the world. Because why? Your world, world starts, starts with, with you. you. Thank you so much for listening to our TED Talk today. Thanks. See ya. <laughs>